just heading out here to estimate a job, I guess. I should kind of show you guys, like, the full aspect of these jobs, kind of the estimating stage to the completing stage. Now this one, this particular job, is a tin roof on a Quonset, and it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere here, kind of way out by Superb. You can see the Superb elevator just back there. But I'm kind of going down dirt roads, not even gravel roads, so this is kind of hard to find, but I think we're on the right track here, so I'll uh, catch up with you guys when I get up there. Alright, now this is the situation we're dealing with here. Just a lot of wind damage on the shingles. Now, I don't see any particular reason why all these blew off. There's some that are really high nailed. That could be an issue, but the majority of them look like the nails hit properly, so I don't know if these just didn't quite tab or what the deal is, but there's absolutely no wind protection out here, so this western facing side would really get the wind. And these are relatively new shingles too. But this side's all good. It's just this side facing west here. That's the problem. But if you can see right over there, that's the superb elevator. If you remember that video I did. And it looks like we got some rotten plywood here. But if we're doing metal, that really shouldn't be too much of an issue. We can replace those if the client would like. But yeah, I'll get to measuring this up. Now I don't have my GoPro with me, so this is going to be a little more challenging. Usually I'll bring somebody to help me do measurements like this, but my brother is busy, so... particularly like these nylon tapes. So this is essentially an 80 foot building, say 80 foot six. So I have to wind this up as I'm in the camera here. And the reason why I like bringing somebody is to get the bottom measurement, especially on this one because there is eaves trough down there. It doesn't go right to the bottom. I don't really want to step too far down the death curve. We call this the death curve on Quonset buildings. But uh, I'll see if I can hook that on somehow and get a measurement. I just kind of used the clip to hang on to the shingle there. Now I'll climb back up my sketchy ladder here. I should maybe, I found this one at a garage sale. I think I made a video about that, but I probably should grab an aluminum ladder, something a little more stable. This rope really gets in your way, messes with your footing. This isn't the safest thing, it's a little wobbly. Okay. Alright, well we're back out here after several months. Those last clips were in August and it's now late October. I just brought my mower out and we're going to get some of this grass cut around here and just get it ready to uh, be a workable area so I can finish this job off. Before.
right, well, I got my trailer kind of backed in here, but there's all this overgrowth. Um, I got this all cut yesterday too. I, I don't think I showed any of that, but all this stuff has got to come out. So I brought my chainsaw. I want to back the trailer right up in there. So I'll just uh, cut this stuff down and back up the trailer. Now that that's all cleaned up, I can go ahead and back the trailer in. All right, so just getting started with the first strapping here. I'm gonna use screws on the bottom and make sure I hit one of the rafters. Um, I can feel when it hits in and then just measure over. But it looks like they got the shingles fairly straight, so I'll just line them up with the bottom of the shingles. And then when the metal goes on, a drip cap will come over and yeah, should, should work out pretty good. All right, so reason I haven't been taking any videos because I've been having uh, compressor issues. That compressor I got, it's, it's not very good. It's pretty fragile and there's no power in the coolant set. We thought there was, but there isn't. So I had to grab a generator and that generator is just not powerful enough to run it when it's this cold. It's about 11 degrees Celsius or so today, which is actually fairly warm for the end of October. But I managed to get that much done, but I just got to go grab a different compressor, a smaller one, because uh, that's clearly not going to work. It's taken me probably two and a half hours to do this much, because I nail half of it, and then the compressor kicks in and flips the breaker on there, and not working too well. So I'll uh, just go grab a different compressor. All right, next morning here, um, I brought a smaller compressor, and the generator runs it fine. So, and it's even colder today. That heat of compressor, I don't know about that one. It's a nice compressor, but fragile so I'm a little bit further along here I got that one up but I'll just kind of show you what I do um, since I'm doing this by myself I just cut pieces to exactly the length that I need and then I just kind of climb the strapping Put one tack in it. Could get up one more, make it a bit easier. Climb over to this side, get the garbage out of there. And I'll just move this up right away so I don't have to come back and do it. Try not to nail my hand. And I like to put lots of nails in here just so we don't have any issues with it blowing off. Um, I may even come back and throw some screws in it just to be a hundred percent safe because whenever I've seen metal blow off a roof it takes the strapping with it because the strapping is the weakest point. And then if it doesn't line up perfectly, whatever, it's just strapping. You got a whole three and a half inches to screw into. And then so on and so forth.
sit tight. Because if they don't sit tight, then there's a bigger risk of them going off. Alright, so I got this side here all finished. And that's about as far as I can go right now. Uh, just taking the leftover material back. I had 10 extra. That was just in case I had to do an extra row anywhere, but I didn't, so uh, yeah. Um, so metal's not here yet, but should be in soon, I think. So I'll take the trailer back and get it freed up, ready to pick up the metal. And then whenever that comes, I'll be back out here throwing it on. Well, the metal finally came in after quite a long wait, but these sheets are 25 foot six long, so trailer's kind of the perfect size to carry these. Uh, I got the blanks back over at the house uh, in the heated garage so I can break everything I need in there. And finally managed to get the trailer out. That was a struggle. Came over yesterday, ended up getting the truck stuck, and I didn't videotape any of that because there was just too much swearing and <laughs> it was quite a heated situation. But I got all this snow blowed out. And yeah, so hopefully uh, we can start on this sometime soon. All right, so fun times today. Um, I was being stupid, being impatient. I have no idea when this yard is gonna get out. There's some nice weather coming up with the next couple days here. So I figured I'd just try and back the trail again. Cause I got through here fine. Well, I don't know about fine with the truck yesterday, but it started out all right. It was going pretty good until I got about to the driveway of the house here. And then I ended up getting stuck. And luckily I carry a shovel with me. Sorry if the running is making it unstable. But yeah, ended up getting stuck right here. And I figured I'd be okay because I was following the tracks from the when I drove in previously. Well, something started to bottom out, and that was it. So I guess I'll just have to be patient. Um, <laughs> I can pre-drill the sheets back home, I guess. Maybe I'll try and clear some snow off the roof, I don't know. Alright, so it is now December and I'm back here. They got the yard plowed out. They did a really thorough job, plowed it down here for me so I can get my trailer back in here. Went all the way up there so I should have no problem turning around. Plowed out kind of a work area. So this should be really nice. Drag the sheets from there for this side and then just 
spin the trailer around and park it over there for the other side. But I ran into Saskatoon yesterday and picked up a couple of these 10 foot saw horses and a big plank. So that'll help for future jobs. Um, I just brought one out here just to kind of try it. Um, the thing with those that's better than like ladders and step ladders is they have a really wide base so they can be on pretty uneven ground and you don't have to worry about it but I'm just waiting for Garrett to show up. I'll get all this unstrapped here and we can pretty much get right to throwing these on. Alright so Garrett's up there clearing the snow and the one thing I have to do is cut these because they made them about five inches too long. I don't know why. I guess better than them making them shorter. But that's as far as my disc would cut by the time it ran out. And I didn't have a bigger one. I just had a smaller one. So that's as far as we're going to get today. All right. So we're just working on throwing the metal on. We got a couple sheets on already. Kind of got them squared and figured. So... I think I'm ready to do a demo without embarrassing myself. See how bendy that is, it just folds around that curve, no problem. Just got to get it up on the ramp. Line it up square. Then it took us a couple sheets to experiment, but I found a way to get this to line up. So we gotta do the rib side first before we put any other screws in. You on the rib up top? Yeah. Okay. Just gotta feel it in place. a little bit goofy going around the curve because it tends to want to throw it off the rib. I kind of compare it to shingling a valley, the kink in it. Is it hitting a, a screw or something? There we go. <laughs> Got it stuck on there. <laughs> I could have maybe, maybe from now on I'll do one more up 
might make it easier. Okay, now the way this works, unfortunately, I just gotta wait until I start screwing. But if we keep the screws at a pattern, it'll flatten it out so we don't get any kinks or bubbles, which is what we don't want. Looks like it's contouring it fairly nice. The issue we were running into over here was we'd just go straight across all the way up and then by the time we got to the top, it would throw it off the rib. And if we tried to put it back on the rib, then it would bobble it really bad. But if it's all on the rib to begin with, then I can probably start down here now. He's far enough up. And the key with these screws is you want to put them in just right. You don't want to torque it right down. But just kind of to the point where that metal washer isn't quite touching. Just so it squeezes the rubber. That end will kind of hang loose for now. And then this is where pre-drilling is nice. You just, you don't have to put any pressure on it. Haven't hit a nail yet from the <laughs> screws. I was worried about that because I just peppered this with nails. That one might have hit one, it kind of went in crooked. Pretty nice. And then my job is to just go grab the next sheet and keep going. It probably should be a two person job carrying these sheets, but it's just too much work to be crawling up and down that. It's kind of hard. And now that there's ice on the straps, can't really get up as easy. But if I roll these and balance them, I won't damage them. So yeah, that's how the metal goes.
All right, so end of the day here, we got almost done. Didn't get as much as I thought we would just cause we were kind of running into some issues with, you know, that curve, it really messes with things. Like you can't get it lined up on the rib quite right. Oh, there go all the pigeons. They're not gonna be able to get in there <laughs> anymore. But yeah, it's looking okay though, I think. So just have to kind of tweak the system of how we screw it. Like you have to do the screws in such a pattern that you don't kind of kink everything. So it's a bit of an experiment, but I think we got it going all right. So now that we have a method, it should go a bit quicker for tomorrow. All right, so next day, and we got to start on the other side here. Um, it's taken a little longer than expected just because of how uneven the roof is. Like it sags in spots and stuff. I was thinking that that might be a problem, but I didn't think much of it, but turns out it is. It throws the ribs off quite a bit. So we really got to tweak it and kind of play with the screw placement to, get it on the rib and not wrinkle too much. So probably if I did a Quonset building again, I would split the sheets in two, just so that pressure of the curve can be relieved in the middle. But I don't know, it's turning out not too bad. All right, well, very productive day today. Um, got this side basically totally done just have the spare sheet here that I'll cut like a little four inch piece and then tonight I'll go back and break gable flash and ridge and then we'll finish up that other side tomorrow and put that stuff on and then we're pretty much done here well last night I spent a couple hours breaking up the rest of the metal um, I was pretty close on my estimate. This is all I had left over. These are just cover sheets for the top and bottom. But I got Ridge, which is just a nice, clean, simple profile. I know it looks a bit amateur without the extra bends in it, but it just looks cleaner once it's up there and it's easier to put the foam in. You don't have to get it right on the edge you can tuck it a bit back so it doesn't stick out and then this is the gable flash i put the extra bends in it obviously so it can get up over the rib and then down and then how i'll get this around the radius to contour it is probably put slits in it every foot or so maybe six inches i'll have to and then it'll just kind of fold over and then I'll have a corresponding slit right there so it can just kind of bend and follow it. That's really the only way to do it. Ideally, you wouldn't put this on, but since it's strapped and the wind is pretty bad out there, I don't want any chance of a really strong wind getting up underneath that metal and ripping it off because that was the issue with the shingles, the wind just got to them, so we're going to try and make this as windproof as possible. All right, now what we're working on here is this contoured gable flash. Now, I haven't really done any video on this just because I've never done contoured gable flash before, so I'm not going to try and do a how-to or anything, but... It's a bit of an experiment putting it on, but I think we got it figured. It has a nice even contour to it. So that way it'll keep the wind from uh, trying to pick these panels up or any water getting in there. Um, just kind of gives it a nice clean look. And from the front, just kind of brings that brown metal, wraps it around looks pretty good and then once you get up to the top it's just back to straight gable flash but this stuff takes a long time to install just mainly because you have to tweak it so much to get it a nice contour so 
it probably took us about an hour and a half two hours just to get that on but I don't know the look of it it's worth it in my opinion just finishes everything off wouldn't look right not to do it all right just doing ridge cap here and just getting it eyed up straight and when I come to the end like this I just take the butyl run a quick bead with my light $80 caulking gun nice smooth flow release the pressure there I don't really particularly like using butyl because it's fairly stringy but yeah and then I'll just pop another one in place all right well I got half the ridge foamed and screwed on but stupid winter sun goes down it's 518 right now and I still have that other side to do but you can see that moisture that's forming on there because I guess it was so warm today that it's all kind of condensing it's probably hotter in the building from all the heat being absorbed by the dark brown but yeah it's too slippery for me to walk over there so Now, final step of the process here is this foam closure, and it just, this is called universal, so it's just flat foam. You can use it on any profile. A lot of times they'll make a ridge foam and an eave foam uh, molded to the same profile as the metal. That stuff's a pain to work with. It comes in boxes in lengths as long as the panels and it's really sticky on the back. This stuff, it's got a sticky tape, but it's not, not too bad. So I just tack the ridge at either end and then you can just stuff this under. And what this does is it just Okay, well the GoPro died, so I guess I'm gonna be trying this one-handed with my phone. So it just prevents any uh, blowing snow or rain from getting up under the ridge cap and in the roof. But I can't really do this one-handed, so um, yeah. <laughs> All right, well that's finished up. I got everything all cleaned up and loaded onto the trailer and ready to start the next job. Hopefully I can pick up some deck boards today. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this. Um, this was a long, like, I don't know, three or four month long kind of start to finish thing, but it was fun, interesting. Um, something kind of challenging just kind of due to the um unevenness of the structure and everything like that but uh, i think it all worked out so yeah thanks for watching and stay healthy everyone